So in, in high-risk prostate cancer patients, um, I believe it's crucial to know uh, what the extent of the disease is. And it's, I mean, this is no debate. PSMA PET is superior to conventional imaging. We have a lot of retrospective series proving that, but also prospective evidence from the study by Michael Hoffman and Lancet uh, last year or two years ago. And, um, and this also shifts now patients to a different category a category from local uh, disease, then maybe you detect small lymph nodes. If you have a conventional lymph node uh, imaging, maybe some, some lymph node metastasis, then it's not only regional, but maybe also uh, yeah, in the region peritoneum or even uh, you see bone lesions. So it shifts patients in different classes. The important point is now, and we don't know yet, what is then the optimal treatment for those patients? But, and this is my point why I think PSMA pet upfront is important. You can discuss more openly with the patient also about the data that we don't have for outcomes, but this for outcomes, the outcome data in, in prostate cancer, it takes uh, several years to see if the change in management that we think is, 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 uh, is crucial or is, is beneficial for the patient, that it's uh, really is proven um, to, to have better outcomes. And in particular, I think there are two cases or two scenarios where also it is very beneficial to have a PSMA pet upfront. And this is for once you have five to seven, eight percent of patients who have a high risk prostate cancer that does not have PSMA expression. Uh, on the cell surface or not, not a elevated PSMA expression. And for those patients, you don't have to bother with PSMA PET uh, after surgery, after uh, treatment ever again, because for those patients, they don't have the marker. And then you know it up front. And the second cohort of patients, high-risk patients who have um, a tumor that does not produce a lot of PSA in the blood. So you cannot use PSA for monitoring very well. But if you know upfront that those patients have a PSMA positive tumor, then you can say, oh, we use this kind of imaging um, for follow-up or we incorporate it uh, in follow-up. And Conventional imaging, like bone as, uh, scintigraphy, is, is not as good as, as PSMA PET, and especially also for biochemical recurrence. It uh, detects lesions only at much higher PSA levels than PSMA PET does. And conventional imaging, like CT or MRI, also have a, a size limitation for lymph nodes, for example. So, um, and it's one examination. PSMA PET together with a cross-sectional imaging, CT or MRI, but PET-CT is absolutely okay. But another thing that I think is an important, uh, important uh, point is that if you use a PET-CT, also use a diagnostic CT with it. So you have basically diagnostic cross-sectional imaging, you have a PSMA PET, the only thing that you would miss is a bone scan, but we know it's inferior to PSMA PET. And then you have a really nice um, yeah, imaging. You have, of course, it, no imaging would ever be perfect, but you have the best available information for your discussion with the patient. And coming back again to, to imaging, I mean, we talk about high risk, where I think imaging is really important. When you look at intermediate risk patients, I think here, even with PSMA PET, we don't pick up so much. So in, in one study that we, uh, we performed, it's a retrospective analysis, of course, but only uh, roughly 7% of unfavorable intermediate prostate cancer patients showed positive lesions. So it is debatable if you need imaging at all in those kind of patients, maybe unfavorable, yes, but favorable intermediate risk, you should not really do any imaging for staging. Um, I'm not talking about the local uh, information that we get from multiparametric MRI, which is um, for local detection and local staging, 
uh, the gold standard, of course.